the question is a mother brings a 13 year old daughter to the opd with a swelling on the left side of her lower jaw okay intraoral examination reveals a bony expansion in the premolar and first molar region periapical view of the radiograph of taken which is shown which showed periosteal bone growth at the inferior border of the mandible also paresthesia of the lower lip is present what is the most probable diagnosis of this patient okay let's enlarge the image a little so that you can see where the arrows also showing and pointing to you about the periosteal growth of the bone so this bone growth that you see is prop, prop, growth, as they have mentioned is growth of the periosteum okay so let's look at the key points now number one is that the patient is a 13 year old okay that means the patient is a young patient with a swelling on the left side that is okay bony expansion in the premolar region that is your second key point Periosteal bone growth is the third point. Paresthesia of the lower lip is the fourth point. Now, if you have paresthesia of the lower lip as well as at the same time you have some form of uh, such expansion of the lower border of the mandible where your periosteum is growing, that means you should understand that the patient might either have had a trauma or there is a malignancy that is present. Now, they have not mentioned anywhere that the patient has had trauma in the past. Otherwise, that can be completely ruled out. So, your answer is going to be some, some form of malignancy. Now, when you look at the options that are given, Ewing sarcoma, idiopathic histiocytoma, fibrous dysplasia and proliferative periostitis. Now, when you look at the image, you can identify that proliferative periostitis occurs periostitis. That means, there is inflammation of the periosteum. If there was inflammation of the periosteum, there would have some form, there would have been some form of either carious to destruction which would have been visible in the PA radiogram or you would have had the chief complaint of the patient would have been pain and because of the pain the patient is having some form of growth. Now over here they have not mentioned of any form of pain. So that is why proliferative periostitis can be ruled out from this option. Coming to fibrous dysplasia. What happens with fibrous dysplasias? Number one, fibrous dysplasia is more common in the maxillary uh, posterior region as compared to the mandibular region. Now, since it is more common in the maxillary region, the num percentage of patients presenting with fibrous dysplasia is going to be less. Second most important point is fibrous dysplasia occurs in much more older patients and not in such young patients. Third point, fibrous dysplasia does not show a proliferative periosteal reaction. Fibrous dysplasia is something that wherein the uh, fibrous tissue blends with the bone and then starts growing. So the bone is replaced by fibrous tissue and that fibrous tissue is continuously growing in size. So you will not have any periosteal reaction in such a situation. And that is the reason why fibrous dysplasia can also be ruled out. Coming to idiopathic histiocytoma. Histiocytoma is again a, a soft tissue tumor. It is a sarcoma. However, the problem with histiocytoma is it is a fibrous tissue tumor and it does not affect the bone or rather it does not have any form of bone reaction. That is the thing with fibrous histiocytoma or rather idiopathic. Idiopathic is basically you don't know the cause. So histiocytoma cannot come as an answer over here because the presentation of histiocytoma is very varied. Moreover, again in a patient who has got histiocytoma, the age group is a little more older. It is somewhere from the mid 20s. And that is the reason why even idiopathic histiocytoma can be ruled out. And that brings us to the answer to the question, Ewing sarcoma. Now a little about Ewing sarcoma, also known as round cell tumor. Why? Because when you take a, a histopath or you observe under the microscope, you will see a lot of round cells as you can see over here. So you will see a lot of round cells and these round cells are arranged in what is called as a filigree pattern. This is an important MCQ that could be uh, asked for you. So, filigree pattern will be present. Now, the prime, as you can see, this is a this is basically an image that I had put up primarily for you to uh, just note down the key points. Like for example, bone is the axial skeleton is the most common region where it is occurred. Axial skeleton means your spine, your uh, thorax, and your uh, sternum. So, these are the regions where it is most commonly found. Then metastatic sites are to the lung, 
bone and bone marrow. Bone marrow, of course, because it is present within the bone, it can go to any other bone. Uh, now, lungs are the most common. Lungs and livers are two common organs where metastasis occurs very commonly. So that is the reason why lungs is one more organ. Then uh, findings are Codman triangle, where is which is basically a periosteal bone growth. This is seen even in osteosarcoma. So, periosteal bone growth, periosteal reaction is common in Gary's osteomyelitis, osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. So, but however, if you have Codman's triangle, it will narrow down to osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. Okay. Now, in the question, there was no osteosarcoma that was asked or that it was not given amongst the options. That is why Ewing sarcoma was the closest answer that you could go to. Second is moth eaten appearance. That is something that is moth eaten appearance is also seen in osteomyelitis. It is early osteomyelitis or later late osteomyelitis, you will have a moth eaten appearance of the bone. And this is important onion peel appearance. This onion peel appearance is basically because of the uh, periosteal reaction where the periosteum starts growing. This is also seen in osteosarcoma as well as Gary's osteomyelitis, where you have a typical onion peel or onion skin appearance. Now, histologically, when these round small blue cells that you see, the intraosseous component is called as Ebbing sarcoma. However, if this entire tumor occurred outside the bone, like its origin is purely from the bone out, out is purely from the soft tissues outside the bone and it has no localization within the bone, that means it is then called as PNET, peripheral neuroectodermal tumor. That is the soft tissue counterpart of Ewing sarcoma. This can probably again be asked as an NCQ to you, and that is the reason why you just need to remember something about it mildly. 